Many times we make mistakes and do that. We, we sin and fall short all the time and we do stuff like this. But when He reveals it, we are to repent. We are to be in humility and be humble and say, Lord, forgive me. Shine that light back into my heart and help me not to do that again. I, was, I touched and agreed with the wrong and I was in darkness. But let me keep on. He said, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Did you see that? This may explain a whole lot of strife. There's a whole lot of division and strife. We get all upset about it. We'll be hitting our knees at home. What is this? Why can't we get along? How come everybody takes off and just leaves? How come nobody loves one another to stick it out? Even when something is said wrong, how come we can't love one another and have fellowship with one another and just hang in there? That's what you do when you have true love. That's right. Love covers. I want to do this. Love so. covers. That kind of love doesn't exist no more. It only exists in the light. We don't have it in ourselves. We don't have it even sitting in church in our own selves. It only comes through the light. We have to have the agape love through the Holy Spirit. We have to be those wise virgins to allow the Holy Spirit to lead our lives, to fill our lives, to cleanse our lives, to trim those wicks. It's time to awaken. It is time to awaken. Because we're going to need one another. We're going to need to stick it out with one another. Even when somebody aggravates you, don't mean they're the devil. It just means they're another person with an opinion. And they get on your nerves sometimes. They may be trying to tell you how to cook. Or what not to put salt on. Or, or, or something else. Something just crazy. We're just getting on my nerves. They're going to tell me what to do. I know what to do. And then fool around. I'm leaving that church today. They got on my nerves. And I told me what I'm going to do. That's wrong. You need to go to your brother or sister and come together. Do you all know how important it is to be in unity in the body of Christ? Do we really understand it? I don't think the church as a whole understands that because if we really understood it, we start calling every all these leaders up in the whole churches all over this community and say, let's come together. Let's come together in love and unity in Jesus Christ and watch the power of God come down. Amen. That's what we need. But sometimes we're not walking in the light. We may know a whole lot of Scripture. We may know this verse from Genesis to Revelation, but does it still mean we walk in the light when we got pride? No, we lie. We do not the truth of what John said because we're walking in pride. I oh, will not call them. They happen to be a Baptist. <laughs> that, that's not walking in the light. It lets you know where the church is today. When you, the first thing he had me start doing is looking at things like he sees things. To quit looking at things like I used to see things. Because I used to see things down here on the ground level. Well, it's pretty good from here, Lord. I can't see much here. But when you step up there in that watchtower and he starts showing you how he looks at things by his word and the light, it breaks your heart. Because he says, look at my bride. Look at my bride. Severed and divided. Full of despite, strife, and hate even. And look at them. Because there's, there's people saved in all these different places. We're, I hope we're not the only bunch saved over here in these pews. <laughs> The heaven's too big for that. <laughs> <laughs> there's people saved in all these churches. Not all of them, but there's people saved in them. And I believe the Lord's about to shine His light upon this situation and bring us all together. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's going to be beautiful. And it's going to be beautiful when we line up with His light and walk in the light as He is in the light, praise God. And then you talk about it now, Lord. They were in one accord in the book of Acts. And then when they were in one accord in the upper room for 120 days, putting up with each other. Some of them might have stumped. They might not have took a bath the day before. Yet they put up and they forbeared one another with long suffering and love. And said, brother, I love you, but you might want to get some life boy over there. <laughs> you know, they would have been there a long time. Think about it. Now, I want you to think about it now. I mean, really. They had to make some adjustments. You know, you're looking at it. 30, 40 days. I know they 50th day was Pentecost, but they stayed in there and waited in love. They, it, it takes love because you're not looking at everybody's little bitty faults and you're walking in the light. Jesus walks in the light, and when He comes to you and me, He can find fault if He wanted to. You know what I mean? He can really find fault when He first comes to us. When He first starts drawing us, 
with His grace and mercy and compassion, He could say, Whew, I ain't drawing you. You bad. <laughs> you way, but you, uh -uh. you don't need to be in this light. You're way too dark for the kingdom of heaven. It's not what He does. He overlooks that old mess, comes down to bless. Praise God, that even rhymes. <laughs> Overlooking the mess to reach down and bless and comes into our life and covers us because He knows we don't know no better. That's how we got to start looking at one another. Some people actually don't realize that they offend you sometimes with certain things, little mediocre things. I don't know why I'm going into all that. I just feel the Holy Ghost. I wasn't even going to go in there. But it must be something going on. Something in the Spirit is trying to tell me that, that we must start loving one another, y'all. We must stay in love and walk in love. Because that's where the power of God is. That's why many of us have to depend on medicines and doctors and hospitals and all these things of man because we're not walking in love like we should walk in love. Think about it. There's peace in love. Blood pressure don't fly up off the wall when, you, when you're walking in love because you don't get angry and outspoken and going crazy. You see what I'm saying? It's calm. Jesus walked in. I could keep on going with that. Don't know who that's for. <laughs> I think it's for all of us. Praise God. But Isaiah 60, go with me to Isaiah 60 real fast. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 60. Verse 1. Arise and shine. We've heard this before. Arise and shine. For the light, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. I, think he, I think he's talking about our time. It sure looks that way, don't it? Mm -hmm. Darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. Remember the love of many are wax cold. Many will be offended. What we've been talking about every Sunday morning, gross darkness has covered. Mm -hmm. It's starting to cover. Guess what we got to do? We're going to be completely opposite from gross darkness. But the Lord shall arise upon you, and His glory shall be seen upon you. How can they see our glory <coughs> if we're walking in darkness? Sure. If we're agreeing and supporting things or not even let the Lord clean us up, how can they see the light of the Lord on us. If we walk in the light and we allow Him to cleanse us and walk therein as He is in the light, praise God, then the light shines off of us in a dark world.